11 days ago, we left our home in Denver and set out on an 18-day trip to South Africa. Not only does this mark our family's fourth continent and 23rd country in three years of constant travel, but it also lets us check off Aaron's top bucket list destination. So after exploring the incredible cultures of Johannesburg, Cape Town, and the Winelands, it's finally time to trek into the bush for some big game safari adventure. But that starts with a full day of travel, so we're taking you along and showing you the Airlink flight experience to Kruger, the chartered plane experience to Pinda, how we pack efficiently for a safari, and what our luxurious mountain lodging is like. Let's get to it. We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise see only in textbooks and TV. We are going on a safari! <laughs> I can hardly control myself. This has been at the very, very top of my bucket list for as long as I can remember. I have always wanted to go on a safari and we're headed there now. We're on our way to the lodge and it's a bit sad to be leaving where we are now, Babylon Storen. You've got to check out those episodes because this place is a fairy tale. So I'm gonna take a quick moment to have a gratitude moment before we leave and then we're getting in the car heading to the airport. Okay, Woo. <laughs> let's go. We've got a few obstacles to get through to get to the lodge, so first is the drive. It's a short drive there. In fact, I feel like it's shorter than on the way out here, but we're heading into Cape Town and uh, we should be there by about 8.15. It is 7.37 right now. It was a bit of an earlier morning for all of us. Uh, I think we were up around six o'clock. The kids got up a little bit after that. Just had to get all packed up, get our breakfast, so we could take our pills, malaria pills, very important, and hit the road. So we made really good time so far. That went by so fast. We're at the airport already. Go got a little extra nap in on the way here. I wish I had. Once again, Anne Beyond just hooked us up with a helper here. So let's see if we get to skip some of these lines. Can you tell I'm excited? Easy checked in. Our valet took our boarding passes, so he's gonna escort us right on through. You know, when you go to a new country, sometimes you don't understand uh, how it all works. Uh, the security lines are different. The airport system works differently. So it's it's actually pretty nice to have somebody walk you right through when it seems unfamiliar to you. This or even go to the front of the line for security. We have about an hour until we board. There's a priority pass lounge up here, and since we have a priority pass membership through our American Express Business Platinum card. We're gonna go there and kill a little bit of time. Uh, I don't think any of us needs more food or anything, but maybe the ability to just take a little nap. The kids wanted to hit the bookstore before we would go to the lounge. Brooklyn is obsessed with the manga. I can't say it, she says I don't say it right. I say a manga, I but no it's idea. manga maybe? I don't know. It's Japanese comic style books and she's been collecting them lately. Every time she sees a bookstore, she gets a new one. And now she's got, just from this trip, a stack about this big. Any luck, sweetheart? No, the only Demon Slayer manga they had was like this, like, uh, I don't know what it was called, but it's like a chapter book instead of a manga. All right, did you guys get some healthy snacks for the flight to tide you over? Super healthy. Candy. Not even worried about it. They had a ton of fresh fruits and veggies for the past couple of days at Babylon Store in, so. They're making up for it with some candy, no problem. Lounge time. Hi, how are you? All set, here we go. I know this might not be a good idea because I'm already so excited that I'm gonna get some coffee, a little more caffeine. Let's get to our gate, it's time. First flight. We're looking for A9. Colt always seems like he knows the way. He has no idea what gate we are. Looks like they went and changed our gate on us, so we are no longer A9. We were in that line. I looked outside, there was no plane, even at the end of the jetway, and then one pulled up, but it's not even the same airline. So we asked around, and turns out we've been moved to what, A8? Yeah. We checked with somebody in line, made sure they're going to the same place we are, and it looks like the plane is an airlink flight, so I I think we're in the right place now. I definitely think we're heading to the right place based on the wardrobes of the people in line with us. Thank you. Cape Town to Kruger, two-hour flight, let's go.
Oh, you're gonna like this airport terminal, baby. Oh my gosh, it is cute. The main terminal there is like kind of like a hut. Oh, we gotta look for a sign with our name on it. Hello. Hello, hello, how are you? Good. Lockwood. Lockwood. Ah. So this is Kruger Airport and we're just passing through because we're about to jump on our charter flight to get to Pinda. We're only gonna be up there for two days and then we'll actually come back through here for two days, two nights of safari in Kruger. So we'll be back. Well, another airport lounge for us. This is Kruger's little lounge before we get on our charter. We might be getting on now. Let's go guys. Does my voice sound different now that I'm from three weeks in the future? You may have noticed that I had come down with a bad throat bug by this point in the trip, which brings up a super relevant topic. We booked this trip over a year ago, and we've been paying off the cost to the tunes of thousands of dollars a month over that same period. That's a lot of time and a lot of money to put at risk should something go wrong at the last minute or in the middle of the experience. That's why we've also spent the entire year partnering with Safety Wing to help protect us against those risks. Not only does their travel coverage protect us against the transportation, lodging, and weather snafus that are outside of our control, but their focus on medical coverage is exactly what we need on trips like this to help with unexpected illnesses or one of Colt's many confrontations with the local wildlife. Not this time. They've even added new options for people who live outside of the U.S., like an adventure sports add-on to cover cave diving, ATVs, and scuba, or an electronics theft add-on that's great when you're traveling with high-end devices. And they've even further streamlined their already great response times. Getting connected with a real person still takes only seconds, but even claims are now turned around in seven to 10 business days. You can get up to a quarter million in travel protection for as little as $45. When you're taking trips that each cost thousands and thousands, that's just a smarter way to travel. To see how much protection you can get for the lowest possible premium, just go to followabc.com insurance or use the link in the description to get a quick quote today. Let's get to the bush. Yep. So this is a Cessna caravan, 12 people, it is packed. I think we're gonna take the last seat here. It's like a minivan in the air. It's definitely tight quarters. It's an hour and 10 minute flight, and it's about to get loud, so we'll see you when we land. I guess that is all it is. No terminal. <laughs> Just a landing strip and some jeeps waiting for us. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Should we go and hop onto the onto the car? We've already got all your bags. Awesome. You're wow. Wonderful. How convenient. How awesome. Emma's gonna be our ranger for the next couple of days, so we're gonna get to know her. And we're taking this jeep. We're like starting the safari already. I spotted some buffalo as we landed too. I wasn't confident enough to shout it out, but I heard people in front of us said, Shotgun, 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 I got shotgun. <laughs> Coach, yes. so I'm gonna Petro. be sitting on I am Phil. Phil, I'm Petro. So I'll be driving. So I did a flashy right there. You did? Yeah. Wow, is that cool? Yes. What's your name? Rudolf Weta. Rudolf Weta. Yes, I'm five. Uh, I'm, I'm Phil. I'm 50. Uh, five zero. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Good chance we're gonna see something just on the way. Absolutely, we've got about a 15 minute drive to the lodge. Okay. So on our way we're gonna pass, as we come around this corner, we're gonna go down a hill past a beautiful big watering hole. Bethwell and Emma say that they've already seen some buffalo and a zebra like in the past hour. So I think we're gonna have some success on our little game drive here just on the trip to our lodge. Rhinos and cheetah are at the top of the list because those two we won't see yeah, on our buffalo, buffalo. Yeah, I'd like to be a buffalo bull, I think. I'll just keep drinking the pool there. We saw zebras. Oh my gosh. Look down the way you see there. Oh, there oh. They are. And polar bears. And polar bears. Should what? we go into the closer road there, boss? We're going to get closer. I can't believe this. This is just us getting to our lodge. Also an impala in the back. We can check off three animals in this one sighting just on the way to the resort. Which one? We're coming up to the lodge. We're gonna see who can spot the lodge first. Can you guys see it? Right up there. there it kind of blends in though. Is. Hola. Hey. There we go. Oh. Hello, Rafael. 
refreshment towel. It smells like lemon and lavender. Colt's finding lizards and... I'm gonna try and catch 20 skinks. All right, so Erin, Philip, Brooklyn, Colt. This is pineapple syrup mixed with Ooh. soda water. Cheers, my love. The first order of business is to sign our lives away, uh, or our kids' lives away, so that in case we do get eaten by a cheetah, and let's be honest, it would be Brooklyn, they're not liable. There are paths throughout that connects the lodge to the rooms and this pool, beautiful pool, infinity edge looking over the, the land. I wonder if we're gonna spot some animals from up there. We'll do that tomorrow. Right up here is the gym. I would like to think that I'm gonna use that, but since we're supposed to be up at 5 a.m. for our morning game drive, I don't know if it's gonna happen. We're allowed to walk back and forth on these paths as long as it's daytime, but you cannot do it alone at night. You have to use security as an escort, I'm assuming, so you don't get eaten. That's exactly why. So we have to be careful with Colt. But once it gets dark, they do have security around here. <laughs> I'm already in love with this particular lodge setup. It's very authentic. I love the thatched roof and everything like that. Very well appointed. We've got multiple showers, including an outdoor shower, which we love. We have a hot tub out there. So many things that we're gonna show you, but we don't have time to do it right now, so that's gonna be later in the episode. We've gotta get dressed because we're gonna meet our guides up at the lodge for high tea, and then we're gonna head back out on the Jeep and see if we can find some other cool animals. We're all in our safari gear now, and we're heading up for high tea, which is totally included, and pretty much everything is totally included. And I have to make sure that I lock this door because the monkeys are very smart and they know exactly where the sugar is inside. So if there's any little gap in the door, they'll get in there and get that sugar. This is gonna be the perfect little snack, just the right amount, since we still have dinner tonight. We don't wanna ruin our appetites, but what is this, looks like a little corn fritter maybe? Most importantly, I got tea instead of coffee, and this is a local African tea. I'm gonna ask Emma again what it is. Rooibos. Rooibos. Chev and Dev said to have this? Yeah. There you go, Chev, thank you. Oh, that's different. It's like very, very subtle. Uh, it's not herbal, probably mostly a black tea flavor, but it's just very mild. We've had our snacks, we've got our briefing, so now we're gonna head out for a little game drive. They call it the afternoon game drive, although it's like almost five o'clock, so that's like dinner time for us. Pinda has a lot of different habitat types to it, so we're probably only gonna go to one, uh, type of habitat and see what kind of animals we see there and then tomorrow we'll know what we saw tonight and it'll help us understand what else we have to look for. I think this is the coolest vehicle I have ever seen. They're setting us up with everything we need. They passed out binoculars for all of us. This is probably backwards, huh? There we go. And it's gonna get cold at night. It's very hot in the day, but once the sun goes down, it gets chilly. We have these blankets to ride along with us. And Bethuel is gonna sit at the front of the car, like on top of the hood of the car. He's gonna be the lookout. He's gonna have help from Colt because he's got those eagle eyes. Uh, but those two at least will be the first to spot any animals. And look how different these two look from each other. So the female is a lot like brown in color. She's got the white stripes with the white spots on her. Those are Inyalas and we're probably gonna see the most of them throughout this trip because they're everywhere. And they have little babies with them. The babies look just like the mamas with the brown and the stripes on them until they get a little bit older. And then if they're male, they'll start to look darker like the males. <gasps> There's more of them over there. Yeah, is that one elephant poop? The dung beetles roll this ball, so they'll find fresh dung. Look at lots of them. There must be a pile of fresh dung maybe nearby, and then they'll go and roll this perfect ball. Do you see how there's two beetles on it? Yeah. So there's one that's moving around, and then there's one that's standing still there. So the one that's standing still, that's the female that's actually laying her eggs inside the ball, and the male is rolling the ball to go and bury it, so that all the eggs can then lay in this ball. Baby dung beetles will feed on the dung when they hatch inside this ball. I can't believe that we all got so excited about poop. That's right. Look at all of them up there. But as we come around the, the corner, there's a rock there that looks very much like pride rock. And sometimes the baboons sit on top of it and then they'll make loud, like shouting sounds from the top if they see any predators. 
Oh, Rhino, we got it. It's the first of the big five. So do you see how mom's got a flat top to the horn? The baby also has quite a flat top, so both of them have actually been dehorned. And that's something we'll do here on Pinda to prevent poaching. At the moment, it's the best possible solution to making sure that poachers know that our rhinos are dehorned and then don't want to come in and, and kill our rhinos. So, of course, not nice seeing a rhino with that, without a horn and that flat top, but at the moment, a dehorned rhino is better than a dead rhino. Hurt their chances for survival in any way? No. Research that proves that by taking off their horn, it doesn't affect their behavior in any way. The problem would come in if we dehorn some of the rhinos and not others. But because we dehorn the whole population, we don't give males an unfair advantage with some that have horns and some that don't when they fight for dominance. But by dehorning all of them, it doesn't impact their, their survival. While we know the elephants are close to us in this area, let's take advantage of that. We're on a mission. We just heard on the radio that they spotted a herd of elephants. And if we hurry, it's about a 20 minute drive out to them. They are either close by or they're far away. It's one or the other. So if they know where they are, we've got to get to them now because we don't want to miss a chance to see them. On the way, we found some hippos. Wow. Quite a few there. Oh, this eagle eye needs to cross the That was so unexpected. Let's go closer, guys. The elephants can wait a little bit, okay? Even Bethwell has to get into the back right now so that it looks more like the, the typical car profile that the lions would be used to seeing. We don't want to do anything to throw them off of their comfort level right now. He just came out of nowhere, and I love that it was the male lion, so we got to see the mane and everything, and he's so big, but we're trying to get closer to him, actually. Stump, yeah. So we're driving back around to see if we can cut him off at the pass. Not the same as seeing him in a zoo. No. Night and day. It's like seeing a completely different animal. Emma said that there are only two males in this area. We saw one of them on our very first safari. My mind is blown. Oh, rhino and baby. Oh, that's a baby, baby. Oh, still white rhino. Yeah, look at the, the heads close to the ground. You also see that square mouth. I just want to take a picture because it's so beautiful. We found them. This is our fourth of the big five. I can't believe how lucky we are. We have the best rangers. It's like somebody who's trying to have a special evening, maybe an engagement, and the elephants interrupted it. And this elephant's coming to interrupt us. Look, it's on the table and it's like, Brooklyn. Okay. Wait till you see how I can reverse this car, Colt. That's like him saying, okay, you're a little bit too close. And then as soon as we reverse, we're giving them a little bit more space. So animals will show you whether you're getting too close. And oh, here's another one coming. Oh, look, another teeny tiny one. Brooklyn, do you see? What an insane experience. Oh my gosh. What more could you ask for on your first safari? I guess the one thing you could ask for is a leopard to complete the big five on your very first safari. This is a dream come true trip. Well, you never know. We might see a leopard on our way back, but it's getting dark enough now that we're going to head back toward the lodge for some dinner. We'll see what happens along the way. Way back, Bethwell's going to use a spotlight to try and find the animals. And if he does find one, then he uses a red filter because that's the least sensitive to their eyes. And then they'll carry on as if, you know, we weren't bothering them at all. I hope we find leopards. Such a pleasure, guys. Amazing. That was a great first drive, honestly. That was probably the best experience of my life, no joke. It's 
lived up to my expectations for it and we've got many safaris to go. We still owe you that room tour and resort tour and we still need to find the leopard. So subscribe so you don't miss part two. Thank you. Thanks, Sammy. Both are this off and got thick green and white. What do we call this? Twilight? Twilight? Twilight game room. Evening. Twilight game drive. Definitely. What's under his stomach? And why is it so big? Why is there so much? <laughs> that was maybe the best experience. <laughs> We're still in the wild. But you don't look at the look. Oh, are you okay? Did you just break your tooth on the camera? <laughs> yeah. Are you almost